So Bloodstained is now out on the Nintendo Switch. It actually showed up a week later than the other versions. In fact, I've already talked about this game on the PlayStation 4 where I played it initially on release day, again, a week ago. And I did say I would at least check out the Switch version because I want to let you guys know what you're buying into if you want to spend your money on a game. In this case, it's uh, $40. I managed to pick it up physically and it was kind of hard to find because I don't think they provided a, like a ton of copies to stores or anything. I had to go to two different GameStops and a Walmart to even find the thing. It was, it was kind of tough to track down, but I did get it. And I wanted to talk a bit about it because it, it does appear that it needs some work. Uh, and at this point, the developers have pretty much confirmed that it, it does need work as they are shifting resources to fixing it. So it's not even just me or some other people online saying it. It's the actual developer saying, yeah, we got we got to work on this. And I'm going to point out probably what they're going to work on and maybe where they can improve a bit. But at least I will give them this. They do seem very interested in trying to fix this thing if they can. Uh, that's great, but uh, we'll, we'll see, because this is uh, a, a fairly large downgrade, and I feel like it's just not a good port. Like, I don't think the performance or the visuals of this game really reflect the Switch's hardware, as, again, a lot of people obviously understand the Switch isn't as powerful as the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, but this is, like, a, a fairly large downgrade from those ones, okay? And I'm going to talk to you a bit about... Uh, what's going on here, and I, I'll show you some gameplay and everything. So, the first thing I noticed when I when I turned it on, because I initially played it in handheld mode, and I will say, if you're looking to play it on the go, uh, portably, as most people who have a Switch probably are playing portably, unless it is like their main system, in which case they they are you know mostly docked or whatnot. Uh, here's the thing, I think it's actually a a good game to still play portably. Uh, it would be nice if they worked on it a bit, but I think for what it is as a handheld uh, game, I think it's actually fine. I think it's completely playable. In fact, I still think the game is playable completely on the Switch. Some people are probably saying it's like completely unplayable. I don't believe that's the case, but uh, it, it needs work. Now, the first thing I noticed when, when I turned it on in handheld mode was that it was very shimmery, like you could see uh, essentially aliasing all around the place. They have like no anti-aliasing on it at all. So uh, all of the character models, the backgrounds kind of have that stair step effect and it is extremely noticeable. And I would say even distracting at times, um, which was very, very surprising that it, it got to that point because they had to drop the resolution uh, fairly large. Like it's, it's 720p fixed in handheld mode, but then it's 720p dynamic in dock mode with some extra effects minus things like water and background effects and lighting and uh, a lot of effects. I'm not really sure what effects are all of a sudden on, but it's compared to its handheld mode. So that means that the resolution will actually drop from 720p when you have it docked, which means that it, it it's probably not going to look amazing at all on like a larger TV. I use uh, a 28-inch monitor and it was noticeably blurry. Uh, when compared to what I was playing on the PS4, and sometimes, you know, you'll be playing it, and you'll say, okay, I get it, it's, uh, it's on the Switch, they had to do compromises, and they turned the resolution down, but they also halved the frame rate, and it didn't sound bad in practice, you go, okay, 30 frames, that's fine, but it's not a stable 30 frames, that's the other big issue, as I was playing it, I did notice at times that the frame rate would dip here and there, and for some reason, I guess it's just 30 versus 60. It, it feels like your character is kind of unresponsive and you might not notice it when you're, if you just play the Switch version, you haven't played like uh, the PlayStation 4 or the PC or something like that. It, it feels like you're underwater as your character and it seems like there is input lag in this version of the game, like substantial amounts. Uh, people have actually tested it and they've come up with a number of 150 milliseconds of input lag and that is uh quite a bit now just for reference the pc seems to have roughly 33 milliseconds of input lag and that uh is actually not bad but for a platformer and a game that is trying to mirror a symphony of the night you can kind of get an idea as to how this would be uh frustrating and that's the one thing that i think they should work on heavily over everything else is to get that input lag down and try to stabilize that frame rate now i'm going to show you a bit of a comparison 
while we're kind of talking here, and it's between the PS4 and the Switch version. If you don't already have it on, I would turn 60 frames per second on if you're watching this on YouTube, so you can kind of get an idea of, I, I guess, the smoothness of it, because the 60 frames certainly helps when it comes to things like uh, button presses, inputs, and being able to navigate these levels, and just getting a, a very fluid experience. And we've seen platformers on the Switch that look better than this and perform better than this. I'm thinking right off the top of my head of like Tropical Freeze. I would say that looks better and performs better, obviously. I would say uh, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe looks better and performs better. Like there are actually quite a few examples now. I know Hollow Knight is a different art style, but that's 60 frames per second and uh, runs like a dream, right? I think it looks great too, it looks better even. Uh, it's It makes me feel like the Switch version was an afterthought for the Bloodstained crew with a porting company, or they felt the need to have to put it out sooner than it was ready. That's the other thing. Maybe they didn't have enough time with it, but they're saying they're shifting resources to work on this one, and I would I would say, uh, yeah, the Switch version is probably going to sell the it has a good chance of selling the best, to be honest. Uh, the, these kind of games do very well on the Switch, right? Smaller indie-style games, 2D platformers especially, do very well on the Switch. Uh, it, it does run at 30 frames compared to 60, as you're seeing. Came out a week after the other versions, uh, but I did play some of it, and despite a lot of these flaws, the game is still very fun. So I want to at least say, if this is the only way that you can play this game, I think you're still going to enjoy it, and then I, I would really hope that they would fix some of these issues. It actually is harder to recommend this because of uh, how how poor this port actually is comparative to other ports, for example, that we've seen or just other games and platformers that are already on this system. So it's unfortunate, I would say. Uh, Bloodstained is still very fun. I have a video just talking about it in general and, and my thoughts on it, but I, it's hard to look at this Switch version and say that it's completely worth the $40 until it gets kind of fixed up. They also talk about multiplayer being added because I got it physically. I took a picture of the back because it was a little odd, some of the options they had, but appears that there's no way to play multiplayer in something like tabletop mode or in handheld mode, at least uh, I guess on the same screen. Whereas when in docked, you do have a, a one to two player option. So again, not 100% sure on that one, why tabletop mode wouldn't be available for that. But I guess when the patch goes through, I can I can take a look. And they are going to add several other things. Boss Rush Mode, I believe, is something they're going to add. And the thing about this game, it sounds like they want to support it for a little while going forward. They have a lot of DLC planned, it sounds like. I almost feel like because this is a Kickstarter, they got a little in over their head with all the systems they were moving it to. And the Switch, unfortunately, probably came on later in development, and they had to get it out. So... I'm sure Digital Foundry will do something on it. In fact, they've uh, they've told me they are, so we'll check that out. And 
hopefully these patches come out and it, and it does better. But at this time, it's hard for me to recommend it right this second. But I'll keep an eye on it and I'll see what these patches do. And I'm going to continue playing through it because I had to restart. So I guess that's the one advantage for the Switch version. You didn't have to do what I did, which was restart because a patch at 1.02 on the PlayStation 4 uh, broke the game and stopped my progression. So I had to restart after about eight hours or so in that version. And then I've already restarted. So about three hours there. And now I'm a couple hours into the Switch version, so I guess that's the one advantage. I, I guess make sure your Switch version is completely updated as soon as you get it before you start playing it to make sure that doesn't happen to you as well. Let me know what you guys think, though, about Bloodstained Ritual of the Night on the Nintendo Switch. What do you think of it? Dude, maybe the issues don't bother you right now, and I think that's good because that means that you will be, uh, I guess, surprised and happy as the patches go through and they fix some of this stuff. But they've already made everyone aware that they're doing it. They've acknowledged that there are problems, and it seems like they even point out QA and testing as well. So it, it it's not even, like I said, just myself or others pointing it out as, as it being an issue. They are even admitting it themselves. So hopefully they can figure out Unreal Engine 4 with this game on the Switch and make it run better specifically. I, I can live with the visuals if, all right, so if they put this game on the Switch and the visuals were downgraded to this extent, but it still retained the 60 frames per second and the smooth gameplay on uh, from the other versions, I would actually be okay with that. I think that'd be fine because uh, again, we understand compromises have to be made when shifting to the Switch, but to cut the frame rate, to drop the resolution so significantly, to have severe input lag, and then have even further frame drops over that, and then like no anti-aliasing, and so it looks, it just doesn't look great on your TV or even in handheld mode, it's noticeably blurry. Uh, I just don't think that's good. So we'll see what happens. But let me know what you guys think. Like I said, down below. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if not. And I'll see you guys next time.